Are you tired of the manual process of managing access requests to a data model in your Power BI workspace? Do you feel overwhelmed by managing approvals for every user in need of report access? Perhaps you also need to document approvals for compliance purposes. If you answered yes to any of these questions, you have come to the right place. In this report series, I guide you through creating a Power app coupled with a Power Automate flow, streamlining the entire process for you. This is part two, where we will cover the step-by-step -step process of creating the automation in Power Automate. If you missed any of the previous segments or wish to explore what's next, check out the videos in the top right corner or in the description box below. Let's start with the intro. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to guide you through the world of Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. By doing so, you won't miss any of my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. If you missed part one, be sure to start from there as it covers the problem, a high level overview of the solution and a couple of prerequisites crucial for this setup. In today's session, we will be covering 16 individual steps in our automation. To make it easier to navigate between the steps, I've included timestamps below, highlighting each step. With that said, it's time to get our hands dirty and jump straight into Power Automate. Now in Power Automate, our starting point is creating a new flow, namely an instant cloud flow. This automation will be triggered only when a new user submits an access request. I named this flow Power BI Access. Our trigger will be a Power Apps version 2 trigger. I'm going to switch back to the old designer format as I'm more familiar with that layout. I haven't had enough time to fully delve into this new interface yet. Expanding the trigger, we have the option to add an input. Here, we need to include a field that captures the user's email address upon clicking the request button. This field is also known as the user principal name or UPN for short. Having this information is crucial for easily and reliably identifying the user. Since email addresses are unique to each employee, utilizing the UPN guarantees that it won't mess up the rest of the automation. When we click on the add input button, we will select the text option. I replace input with UPN and specify user's email address. Feel free to name this field as you prefer, as this information will be sourced from the app itself. The critical aspect is that this UPN field can be referenced in subsequent steps within the flow. To retrieve the user's profile details, I'll add the new step by searching for Office 365 connector. I'll choose Office 365 users. Within this connector, I search for user profile and select the Get User Profile Version 2 action. Now, we will input the UPN information from the previous step. I rename this step to User Profile. Next, we will add another step to identify the manager of the user making the access request. There are two key reasons for this step. Firstly, in this tutorial, we are setting up a managerial approval flow meaning the user's manager needs to approve their request for accessing the data model and report. Secondly, the user profile option doesn't provide the manager's name by default. I rename this step to manager profile. So far, everything is going smoothly. The next crucial step is to initiate an approval process. And luckily, Power Automate handles this superbly. As the following step, I search for the approvals connector and select the start and wait for an approval action. For the approval type, choose approve slash reject. And since we are dealing with a single manager per employee, the specific option chosen doesn't significantly impact the process. So I select first to respond for simplicity. Once that's set, we will need to input a few more details. Approval title. I prefer a clear and descriptive title to speed up the process for managers. Therefore, I use BILA report access request and pick up the requester name by relying on the display name attribute from a previous step. 
assigned to. I pick up the user principal name from the manager profile step. Additionally, under the advanced option in the requester field, I include the user's email address as well. I rename this step to access request approval. With this step, we've accomplished a significant portion of the heavy lifting. Great progress so far. The logical next step is to wait for the outcome of the approval, which means adding a condition based on the outcome field from the approval. This field will have a value of either approve or reject. Choosing the single approval option ensures that at this stage, I don't have to wait for all the other approvals to come in or create a list to check that all responses are equal to approved. There's a more advanced flow method where you can manage multiple approvals simultaneously. If that's something you would like to explore and learn, let me know in the comments below. Let's start by handing the not approved sign as it's the simpler aspect to address. We will need to notify the user that their request was rejected. For this, we will utilize the Microsoft Teams connector and specifically the post message in a chat feature. I select the Flowbot to post as and choose the chat with the Flowbot option. The recipient should be the user and we will extract the UPN or email address from their profile. Lastly, I'll include some friendly text to ensure that user understands what happened with their request. I rename this step to notify user reject. I prefer adding a terminate option to stop a more complex flow. While it may not be necessary, I find it beneficial to display different status messages based on the outcome. I select the failed status to conclude the request. This step will be renamed to terminate, reject. Let's return to the approved side of the flow. To grant access to the data model and report, we will add the user to the Office 365 group, created in part 1, responsible for managing the Power BI access. For this, search for the Office 365 groups connector and select the add member to group action. I specify the group ID as report access. Additionally, I select the user principal name field from the user profile step to add the user to this group. As a next step, I replicate the same Teams chat option that we've set up for the rejected sign. I simply copy paste the details from the rejection sign. To save the details of the approval, we will create a CSV file using the create a CSV table action. In the From section, I'll add the dynamic field from the approval, namely the field called Responses. While it's possible to explore adding more or fewer details, it would add some complexity to the flow. For today's demo, this setup should be enough. With the CSV table created, our next step is to save this file to our designated SharePoint site. We will begin by searching for the SharePoint connector, and selecting the create file action. Firstly, we will specify the site address. Then the folder path should be shared documents. To make file identification and searching easier, I suggest adding a friendly name. You might consider creating a naming convention that works for your business and satisfy auditor's requirements. For example, BILA, report access request dash display name dot csv finally the file content should be set as the output from the previous step mm -hmm. 
Let's not forget to add the terminate option here as well, similar to what we created for the rejection side. However, this time the status should be set to succeeded. Additionally, I renamed the steps on this side as well. Pro tip, always rename the steps in a flow as it greatly simplifies your work. Referencing attributes or fields from previous steps or even troubleshooting error becomes much easier with clearly identifiable steps. Trust me, I learned that the hard way. Not all approvals happen instantly. There might be instances when people are on leave or forget to approve a request. To ensure a clear line of sight regarding report access, I prefer adding a parallel branch right after the manager profile step to ensure that if after five days there's been no response, the flow is terminated. To initiate this, the first component will be a delay action with five days set as attributes. We will add another notification via Teams to the requester to highlight that their request neither received approval nor rejection within the given time frame. This message will emphasize that the approval process is being cleaned up after 5 days of inactivity. It could be something like this. Let's add another terminate action to this flow, setting the status as cancelled. It's always a good idea to save the flow before moving on to the final step. To ensure that anyone needing access to the report can run this automation, we will need to add binding all to the run only user section. Additionally, it's important to allow them to run this flow as the flow creator, in this case myself, to verify that all connectors are functioning correctly. Wow, you did great! Now we have created an automation that can be used in a Power Apps app to automatically grant access to a Power BI report by adding a user to an Office 365 group. Take a look at this screenshot, showing all the steps. It's amazing how such a complex logic for handling Power BI report access could be managed within Power Automate only using the GUI. I mean, this is freaking awesome. Using a similar approach, you can also create a revoke access button initiated by the manager with fields available for employee email ID or UPN. But that's not part of today's tutorial. In part 3, we will cover the final piece, how to integrate this flow into a Power Apps app and set up the dataset security configuration to ensure that once an access request is approved, user can begin using the report. Until then, feel free to drop any questions or comments you have about today's topic below. Since you stay till the end, I'm confident you find value in this video. If that's the case, please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget to explore more of my tutorials like the ones above me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.